Nature provides us a lot of beautiful things, but nature also provides us asymmetry in time. As we get older, our body and our mind both degrade. And physical degradation you can see. The degradation of the mind you cannot see. So the mind also degrades as time passes. Every interaction with, which we have with people creates, may create stress. And if you don't release that stress, the mind becomes obese, heavy, sluggish, gets upset, it gets irritated, it worries, it becomes anxious. So techniques have to be developed and used, just like physical techniques, exercising, going to the gym, doing physical workout, running, swimming, and we all understand their value. In the same way, one has to use exercises that are for the mind to keep the mind light, aware, at the same time without worries, anxieties. Meditation is a very important technique. There are many techniques. Uh, doing mathematics, music, learning new things. Those are all very important to keep the mind young and sharp. But stress release falls in the category of exercises that are called meditation exercises, which allow you to release stress. Uh, if somebody is rude to you, how do you release stress? If you're upset about something, how to stop being worried, anxious? Meditation is a very powerful technique. And meditation falls in many different categories. Virdhyan. So the dhyan, meditation for the warrior, vir dhyan. And we'll talk about that style of meditation, which is based on movement-oriented meditation. So in general, the meditation serves four purposes. It allows the mind to not wander, because our mind wanders all the time. If often our mind is fixated, it ruminates on something, often on dark side, and we want to pull our mind out of that state into a more optimistic, brighter side. Our mind often is disconnected from reality. So we can't see opportunities around ourselves. The mind is in a non-real state. And opportunities that nature people provide, we can't see them. We see barriers where there are opportunities. Also, our mind sometimes is in a state of worry and anxiety for no reason. If there's a reason one has to do something and the mind has to do something, prepare the body, Often there's no reason and we are still worried, we are anxious. So taking the mind out of those states and placing it in a better state, that's one of the important goals. Uh, because meditation for the warrior, for the person engaged in life, has to serve a purpose. It's a tool for self-awareness, but also to take the mind out of certain states and place it in a state where we can then go on with life, do our duties, do things that are needed, earn our living, cook food, prepare ourselves, take care of our families, take care of ourselves. There are four parts to this style of dhyan. First element is precision. Second element is dance. Third element is visualization. And the fourth element is worship where you feel part of the universe. So worship with a mantra which universalizes you. So the mantra I use is ikonkar, one source through all creation. Right? We are all one. So the oneness with the universe, ekonkar, is a powerful mantra for the virdhyan. So let's just review uh, by demonstration the vah pranayam. So I stand with my feet touching, open my chest. So the first thing is just precision, learning to do something precisely. So I'm standing, I'm going to bring my hands upwards. As I look to the sky, then I'll take a wider stance, bend at my knees. And I'll inhale through my nose. So I'm inhaling now. Rising up, opening my heart, my throat. Exhaling back. So the first part is just doing something very, very precisely. The second part is bringing an element of dance into your movement. So I'm going to now do the same movement, but in my mind I'm performing a dance, like the ocean is dancing, the wind is dancing, the birds are dancing. So I'll do the same movement with an element of dance. So my fingers, hands, I'm not thinking of individual parts, I'm thinking of my form in time and space. So again the same movement.
So that's the second part of this meditation technique, precision, then bringing an element of dance. The third element I'll bring is in my visualization, my inner eye, I'll picture a beautiful flower. And you can picture a beautiful ocean, like behind me, you can picture a beautiful sunrise. So you bring an element of visualization, uh, that's the third layer that you bring in. With every layer, your mind is getting more aware and going into that meditative state. So starting from precision, going into the dance element, then performing a visualization in your mind. So I'm going to do the same thing. It'll look the same, but in my mind, I'm imagining a beautiful lotus or a lily opening. So again, I'll do the same wah pranayam. So that was the third element. And the fourth element, which is of course the very important element, is a sense of worship. Worship not in the sense of God and no God or those kind of worship in a temple or a religion kind of worship. Worship in the sense that I'm part of this great beautiful universe. I'm part of this entire creation that I surrounded and I feel a sense of infiniteness and at the same time a sense of infinitesimalness. So I'm both a small entity, I'm also universal, I'm infinite. So I'll use the mantra of ekonkar. So when I do this breath, in my mind, I see this beautiful ekonkar. So the same movement at the fourth level. So at this fourth level, as I was inhaling in my mind, I'm going over ik onkar. As I inhale, ik onkar as, an, as I exhale. So in terms of technique, what does one do? So you pick a pranayam. So you may pick a shant pranayam, the wa pranayam, the chardi kala pranayam. After you picked it, the first minute, focus, first minute will take about five breaths. So a five minute exercise. First minute, focus just on precision, doing the movement very, very precisely, keeping openness of the chest, openness of the throat, with the eyes closed. So five breaths, just focusing on precision. The second minute is devoted to thinking of yourself as a dancer, as a beautiful dancer, performing a dance. The third minute, performing with a visualization in your mind. And form your visualization beforehand, so maybe a beautiful rose, a lily, a lotus, or a beautiful sunrise. So a visualization and keep that visualization in your mind like a flower opening with every breath, a flower opening. And the fourth element bringing the mantra, ikonkar, or you can come up, the mantra could be as simple as love. Love is a beautiful mantra, ikonkar is a beautiful mantra, om is a beautiful mantra. So a mantra gives you that sense of universalization. And why the movement? The movement opens your, your body. And when we move, our mind has to go through a certain exercise also. So the movement is a great way to immediately capture your mind, place it from one state of darkness, let's say, or worry or anxiety, bring it into a state of optimism. So you do these movement. So the first minute precision, performance, dance, third minute visualization, and the fourth and fifth minute mantra. So that's about 25 breaths, takes five minutes. And initially just practice five minutes. Then as you get more adept, more expert, and your body feels comfortable, you can increase it. Now after you've finished, you'll feel the sense of just beauty sense of just lightness in your body, also in your mind. And initially that sense may last just a few minutes and your mind may go back to worrying, being anxious or your normal state. But as you practice more and more, that period will last for a longer time. So you finish your five, six minutes or 10 minutes of meditation, virdhyan, and the period may last longer, may last for half an hour. Gradually it will spread over the whole day and your mind will be in that state of dhyan, lightness, the entire day. Uh, but even in five minutes, you will feel that effect and it may only last for a few minutes. And what we recommend is doing it in the morning, 
doing it at night and if you can do it in between so three times if possible five minutes only and it's a beautiful way it's a great way to take your mind out of those four states state of constant wandering state of darkness fixation state of being not connected to reality practice this and then see the effect almost immediately but with everything else like if you start working out you won't see your muscles suddenly becoming very strong it takes time so trust and build up and have the discipline and within days within weeks you will see this effect and it's a powerful style of dhyana